West Ham hoping to earn their first home points of the new campaign. Bournemouth aiming for their first point anywhere in Premier League football. It is a full house here at Upton Park. And although there won't be weather like this every week, this campaign, a day to make the most of at the bowling ground for both the locals here in the capital and those who come from the beaches of Bournemouth for this taste of Premier League action at Upton Park today. For Bournemouth, they are unchanged in Monday's loss at Liverpool. So Arthur Boric continues in goal. It's the same back forward to serve them so well for much of their rise all the way to the big time. In midfield, Matt Gradle and Matt Ritchie provide the width with Andrew Sermon and Newton O'Kane in the centre. Josh King will play in behind of Callum Wilson with both strikers still searching for their first ever Premier League goals. And the big money signing Tyro Mings is on the bench once again. Hoping his players can channel the frustration of events at Anfield into a winning performance here in East London today. So we're all set. It will be Bournemouth who will get the match underway. So on a roasting day here in East London, will it be third time lucky for Bournemouth as they await their first goal and their first points in Premier League football? West Ham inconsistent so far. Eddie Howe will feel his team here can get at the Hammers. How do you expect Bournemouth to play this game, Tony Gale? The way they play every other one, Joe, and they go for it and they look to you know, get possession of the ball and try and dominate the game. I think that other teams are going to expect that with Bournemouth, that sometimes they have to give up possession. But, of course, for all that possession, you've got to pull the, put the ball in the back of the net and win games and get points on the table. And that's what Bournemouth want to do today. I mentioned the warmth here at Upton Park today. They are set to be drinks breaks midway through each half for rehydration. Summer is back here in the capital city. Here's Max Gradle for Bournemouth. Tussling there with Carl Jenkinson. And the verdict goes Bournemouth's way. Big money signing, £7 million. Gradle starting his second match in a row for his new club. It's Charlie Daniels, the left back. Andrew Sermon. The early pressure coming from the top flight new boys. Sermon there with a the flick on. Here's Josh King. Up against Pedro Obiang. And King has got past him with ease. Too long though for Callum Wilson. Easily got away on that far side, but the cross wasn't the best. He overhears it by about four or five yards. Having got to this position, this has got to be whipped in. Comes out of it with a little bit of good fortune, but that's got to be whipped in. There's no way Wilson's going to be coming over the top of those players in there. He's got to whip that ball into him. Well, Bournemouth starting here on the front foot. He had that very contentious loss on Monday night game at Liverpool which could have perhaps should have been very different Tommy Elphick's early goal disallowed and then the offside goal from Christian Benteke which did stand here's Koyate in towards Kevin Northern first take in Bournemouth's goal for Arthur Boric well there's Kevin Nolan there just in shot nearly got on the end of this cross just from the right hand side and from Koyate but that's where Nolan's gonna revel in that position he's got a Position where he can afford to be lazy and stay up pitch today. Here's Gradle up against Jenkinson into Francis. Got the shot away. And the block was by Reed. And it will be a corner for Bournemouth, who made a promising start here. Well, good strike, good blocks by Winston Reed there. Got that away, but far too much space. You could see 
A couple of West Ham, two or three West Ham players really struggling to get back, even early on in the game. They've got to get back behind the ball. Bournemouth will hurt you with their possession otherwise. So Matt Ritchie on set piece duty. Francis arriving late. That's one they'd worked on. The ball been just too high though for Simon Francis. It seems to be the in vogue corner at the moment. Everybody drives in, someone arrives late. A goal scored by Palace at Norwich. First day of the season, similar circumstances, and seen a couple of other teams try it since. It is the first time these two sides have met in the top flight. Just the second time they've been in the same division. The last time was 25 years ago. And they're five games in League and Cup. West Ham are yet to lose against the Cherries of Bournemouth. Here's Ogbonna, one of the West Ham summer signings, £10 million from Juventus. Referring to James Tompkins and James Cobbins in that back four. That was given away poor, they almost came the way of King. Reed there to mop up for West Ham. And the foul committed by Unino Kane. We talk about the Bournemouth possession, but they're very quick to close teams down as well. And when they go in, they go in as one. And if you have a poor touch, they normally nick possession and can be straight into you. And you've got to be very careful when you're on the ball that you're not giving it away so easily. Here's Obiang. Francis with a clearing header. Daniels. We will go back to Darren Randolph, who played twice in the European qualifying games over the summer. This is his lead debut for West Ham. Managed to ship 12 goals in two games against Bournemouth, playing for Birmingham last year in the Championship. Not the opponent he would have wanted to face, I'm sure, on his league bank for the Hammers today. Yeah, if anything's going to give you the EBGBs, I suppose if you conceded that amount of goals, that would, but... You could hear the cheer when the crowd just on that first touch there and he got it upfield that there was relief for him somewhat. Replacing a really good keeper at the moment, Adrian's been in exceptional form for the Hammers. It is the first time since New Year's Day 2014 that Adrian's been missing in a league game for West Ham. It will be a three-game ban as well. Here's Dimitri Payet. Gradle came back, no one was there. It's come the way of Carl Jenkinson. Payet. They've got a home debut goal here last weekend. Sacco flicked on for Northern. And the tackle was by Francis. It will be a corner for West Ham. And a good little movement there. Payet really fizzed this into Sacco. Turn it round the corner for Nolan, but combination of defenders got it away in the end for a corner. But first time West Ham really got on the offensive there. Nolan had enjoyed this role. There's a diamond system behind him, but. He's got less defensive responsibilities being up front with Sacco. So first West Ham set piece. Payets with the ball there. Reed is there. Whistle's gone, it won't count. There was a push seen by referee John Moss, and it will be a Bournemouth free kick. Quite ironic. I think it might have been on Elphick this push. It was Elphick who was deemed. Let's have a look. Yeah, there's a push there. You can see Elphick making the most of that. It was Lovren in the week who had the same kind of thing against Elphick and got away with his foul, but there was definitely hands on the back there, but you can see dramatic reaction from the defender got in the foul again. Here's Sacco now for West Ham. Looking for Mark Noble. Swept away by Matt Ritchie. Was perhaps the standout player last year for Bournemouth. He chipped in with 15 goals in the championship. Eddie Howe likes to do playing as an inverted winger on the right side, left footed player. He's okay. Now Gradle coming inside, nipped off his toes there by Payet. He has Sacco ahead of him. A heavy touch there by Payet. Yeah. It's unlike him, I mean, he's playing really well in that. He's, again, a system that suits him, playing at the tip of a diamond. Just had a heavy touch there when he was running at that back four. 
He's the man who can really pick a pass. They've got to get him on the ball as much as they can. It's a good job there by Tommy Elphick. Obiang with the header on by Kuyate. Obiang again, searching for Sacco. Bit heavy there by Obiang. He came off the bench at half time in place of Reese Oxford last weekend. Oxford is not part of West Ham's 18 man squad. He picked up a slight knock in training in midweek. Cresswell. In goes Northern. Payet supplies the pressure. Simon Francis here, the regular right back since Eddie Howe's return to Bournemouth. Part of the Championship Team of the Year last season. Signed for £25,000 from Charlton three and a half years ago. The whole back four of Bournemouth was signed for less than a million pounds. It's been a wonderful recruitment effort from Eddie Howe over the past few years. And he's been loyal to the players who have earned Bournemouth's spot in the big time. And yeah, that's got the, uh, good to see, Joe, because he's going to give them a chance, and you never know until they have a chance in the top flight. And as I said before, it's nothing to be frightened of. You've got to attack it, attack the situation. They have so far, they haven't got any results, but they've gone about it well so far, other than the, the way the, the scores have turned out, obviously. But you've got to keep the faith. Ritchie with the free kick into a teasing area. There's a suspicion of a hand being raised there in the box. Wasn't spotted if there was. Good ball in from Richie. He's got to hit the target if everyone misses it. Yeah. And there's Elphick with a hand up there. Lucky he didn't hit him on the hand. That would have been a sure yellow card. In the action in the opposing box again. Tommy Elphick, former skipper. Here's OK. He's been called up by the island national setup for the first time this week. Francis trying to test Aaron Cresswell. He's done well there, Francis. There's the ball in. Oh, it's in. Callum Wilson with the goal. A moment of history for Bournemouth. Their first ever Premier League goal. And what a finish as well. We said this man needed a goal for his confidence. What a great finish. Cresswell gets in a hell of a state here, though, Joe, because he's favourite. And Francis bullies him out of it. That's poor defending. But he gets a fizzing cross and look, gets across his marker. That's a great volley. Great finish. And that will do his confidence the world a good. Super quick cross and a great finish. Keeper had no chance. But what was Cresswell up to there? There was no way out. He just had to clear his lines. Francis... And then Wilson made him play. Great goal. What a moment for Bournemouth and for Eddie Howe. His team in front for the very first time in top flight football. Last year's top scorer, Callum Wilson, off the mark in the big time. And there's several thousand fans from Bournemouth in full voice in the sunshine here at Upton Park. Well, the thing about the goal, it was such a poor mistake by Cresswell, and he made a similar mistake against Leicester last week. He was trying to shepherd the ball out of play, and they nearly got a chance out of that. So re not really learning from your mistakes, and that's bad. Poor defending. But, boy, did they make him pay. Really fizzed it in, Francis, and lovely controlled volley, wasn't it, from Wilson? A lack of confidence with the finish from Callum Wilson, who scored 23 times last year. But Aaron Questwell, who was the hammer of the year last season, fan wanting. Gradle on the chase here, up against Jenkinson. And Daniels for Bournemouth. He's begun here with their tails up. They feel they've been very hard done by in their first two games, those 1-0 defeats against Aston Villa, then against Liverpool. What a tough start once again for Slaven Bilic, who saw his team go two down before half-time here last weekend. 
Elementary error as well. That really shouldn't happen from a position like that, nearly on the dead ball line. But having said that, it still needed finishing, Joe. Great finish. Steady, steady. Not the start Randolph was hoping for either in the West Ham goal. And he had no chance with that ferocious shot from Callum Wilson. Payet now for West Ham. Wonderful pass there. And it was a scything ball through Bournemouth rearguard. And Boric just about got there. That's the type of ball I'm talking about. He's capable of, and Boric just gets there because if Koyati just gets a toe to this, this may have been a pen and maybe a red card. That's a great stop. And a glimpse again there, the creativity and the invention of Dimitri Payet. Here's Cresswell. Bit of time for Francis and back with Artur Boric. Here's Steve Cook. Daniels. Of Bonner. West Ham aiming to avoid back-to-back -back defeat in their first two home games of the league campaign. Hoping for a fresh start this year. After those years of grumbling in the final years of the reign of Sam Allardyce here at Upton Park. And ups and downs already for Stavon Brimic. His team knocked out of the Europa League qualifiers, the fine winner against Arsenal on the opening weekend. Again, beaten here by Leicester last week. And behind once again today. Here goes Daniels. Koyate right. stayed tight to him. It's Koyate's job being on the right side of that diamond. If the fullback gets forward on that side, Daniels, which he will do, he's got to track back so that he do not get a two on one situation against Jenkinson. Great start for Bournemouth, though. Just the start they needed, Joda. Well, that was a mistake, it was a, a terrific finish and surely it'll give them a little bit more confidence. This is Sermon. Bent in by Francis, good ball as well, good take by Randolph. And with a calm, some nerves. Well, Eason uh, certainly couldn't be blamed for the goal, it was, a, it was past him in a flash. It was a free transfer from Birmingham in the summer. Did have a few cameos of top flight football in his time with Charlton a few years back. He's 28 years of age now. Sermon. He's the unsung playmaker in the Bournemouth team. Grader. Here's Steve Cook. Charged down there by Sacco. No ball. Searching for Sacco once again. Cook has to be careful. And he just about got away with that. Uh, a couple of mistakes. Cook first caught in possession and then a little bit of a miss kick here. A little bit of nervous defending, really. Again, like Cresswell, just clear your lines. So a second corner for West Ham United. Payet's ball, looking for Reed once again. Now Cresswell. Oh, a lovely nutmeg. Cresswell's cross, a good one. Towards the back post where Coyate was waiting. And that was better from Cresswell going forwards. A good little nutmeg there by Cresswell. Just a little bit heavy because it's hard to direct that one back on target. But a grappling going on in that penalty area again. Defenders have got to be careful. He actually just couldn't get on top of that one. He did score the first league goal of West Ham's season in that 2-0 success to the Emirates. Chip in with plenty of goals at the back end of last season. And the first year in which you really impressed here in the East End of London.
Cresswell's throw. Saka. Couldn't quite find Payet. There's some extra pressure on the shoulders of Diafra Sacco in his early weeks of this campaign. With so many strikers injured right now for West Ham. The likes of Valencia, Andy Carroll, Maro Zarate now as well, who'll be out for two games with a hamstring problem. In effect, they're only fit strikers, so very important before this window closes that, that West Ham go and get one or two strikers in. Andy Carroll, a player whose West Ham career has been tormented by injury over the past few years. A watching brief for him yet again. Well, they hope he'll be a matter of weeks rather than months away from his return. Here's Sacco. He scored 12 goals last year, most of those though in the first half of the campaign. There was a handball there, the referee playing the advantage. With West Ham in possession, here's Payet. No way past Francis. Searching for Wilson, cut out by Ogbonna. And there's Cook with the header. Puyate. Now the Spaniard Pedro Obiang. Ogbonna. Cresswell. Here's Sacco, trying to move past Francis, he's done well here, Sacco. Helping out defensively was O'Kane. Okay. Might be a chance on the break here, Randolph is coming a long way. And he got there in good time. Well, he had a good start in position, the keeper there, Randolph. Again, West Ham looking a little bit exposed, two players going for one ball. If the keeper hadn't been out there, there was a one-on-one on. -one on. It was a good break by Sacco down the left-hand side. Francis defended well, though. He realised he was beaten. It could have easily have given a foul away and a needless penalty, but pulled out the challenge. Here's Payet. Northern. It's Elphick. Into the feet of Josh King. Now O'Kane. Okay. Seemed to be a foul there on Pedro Obiang. Winston Reid amongst those moving forward here for this West Ham free kick as we move towards the midway point of the first half. Just under a year since his last goal for West Ham. And amongst those lurking in the likes of Sacco as well, up there. A commanding header away though by Cook. Jenkinson, that's a mistake by him. And here goes Gradle, who is a pacey customer. He has Wolst up there with him. Gradle going on, big chance here. Jenkinson there recovered with the block. Bournemouth might have made more of that. Well, had a bit of good fortune, but maybe should have got his shot away a fraction of a second earlier. Just allowed Jenkinson a second attempt to come back on him, but again, really nervy defending from West Ham. Strange because both fullbacks who were so impressive last season have made shaky starts this time around. Yeah, well, you can't take anything for granted, Joe. You put your feet under the table and take things lax, and you'll get exposed in the Premier League. And you've really got to be on your game week in, week out. The concentration at this level is vital. Here's Josh King. Obiang being strong there. And he wins a free kick. And we're having a short break here for the drinks break as we have that. Let's see this chance again, Tony, for Max Gradle. Well, Jenkinson does well. He recovers from his first slip, but then again, needless to go in there. He had him going wide, but then get back again and gets another block in. Gradle just needed to reset, get this shot away of a fraction of a second earlier. Look, just hesitated in lining it up. Needed to take it in his stride. Well, midway through this first half, we will have the chance for some rehydration for both sets of players out there and the officials too. It is a very hot day, although a few boos and jeers are ringing around the ground from one or two 
less than sympathetic fan, shall we say. But it was a flying start for Bournemouth, scoring their first goal in the big time after only 13 minutes. Yeah, this it should have been cleaned out easily by Cresswell. Look, he's done the hard part and he gives Francis another chance, fizzes that in. Great finish. Gets across Winston Reid here. Look, all the pace is on the cross, so you just need to divert it on the volley. And he does so with a great bit of technique. Look at that. Ping, little short little jab at the ball, and it's past the keeper Randolph before he can move. There's the pace on the cross, and there's the diversion just onto the target. It's a great goal, great finish. His first goal since the home win over Bolton back in April, which effectively sealed Bournemouth's place in the Premier League. On we go once again. Jenkinson oh, took a chance again there. And he lost possession. Callum Wilson. It's a good tackle though by Obiang. He won the ball. Well, just again, lacking confidence, Jenkinson. Just get it down and play it. Play it early. Dawdling on the ball, they're getting caught out. I thought he was a little bit lucky to get back into the side after the great result against Arsenal at the Emirates. And then James Tompkins is left out, but they're not in their game at the moment, the fullbacks. And Bournemouth are buoyed by that. Here's Francis. And we'll try and test Cresswell this time. Matt Ritchie. Francis, Richie again, lovely footwork, good ball as well. Didn't quite come the way of Wilson. There's Sermon. Bournemouth enjoying themselves here. Richie bending in, but couldn't quite pick out either striker. But booze ring around Upton Park. Yeah, the, the, I mean, the, it's a little bit unfair by the crowd because this Bournemouth team's a good team and you've got to realise they're going to have possession, but they're realising there's elementary errors and they're making the it was a little bit more nervous by their boos, but it's something that you have to cope with. They've got to rise above it. Richie, a little bit heavy with a cross in the end, but the more they can have possession, the more they'll silence this crowd. Or should I say, the more the crowd will boo. At least first two home games against Leicester and Bournemouth. Certainly ones the fans would have expected to win, but you can't take this level of opponent lightly. Bournemouth are proving their worth here, as we saw from Leicester last weekend. Obiang, Cresswell, blocked by Francis. Obiang, searching for Northern, and King beat Noble to it. Charlie Daniels, was a former youth team player at Tottenham Hotspur. Not far of the road, north of here. And he's never played a senior game in his time at White Hart Lane. Nice pass that by Daniels into King. And King unable to get the beating of Alfonso. He's a regular international with the Italian setter. Oh, their passing's far better than West Ham's at the moment. Daniels just fizzed a lovely ball into the striker. Set it up, just 20 yards, crisp pass all along the floor. The passing's better than West Ham at the moment. Well, he was saying this week, Carl Jenkinson, was hoping this year to push for a recall to the England squad. He's one cap game a couple of years ago. He had to up his game if that call is to arrive. Gradle there with a the header. Kuyate, Jenkinson, that's given away for me. Straight to O'Kane. This is King. Now Wilson. Gradle. More neat form of football. O'Kane. In towards King. Oh, mistake there. Wilson, it's 2 0. What about this? Two goals for Callum Wilson. It is dreamland for Bournemouth. But West Ham's defence all that see. Well, I don't think I've seen two worst performances from fullbacks at this level for quite some time. Cresswell this time again with a back pass. And really, they're not concentrating. Jenkinson will give it away earlier. The two of them 
and having such a poor game, they look so nervous. And look at this for a back pass. Well short, and Wilson again a good finish. And you've got to feel sorry for the keeper who's had no chance. That's awful defending. It's too casual, it's too lax. Jenkinson and Creswell giving away chances galore at the moment. And Creswell, unfortunately, has given away the two goals. But again, don't take it away from Wilson. Great finish. A nightmare for Aaron Cresswell. But boy, aren't Bournemouth loving life now in the big time. Two goals in the first half an hour for Eddie Howe's side. And this time they have been clinical. When they've had the chances, they've taken them. Yeah, and taken them really well. And I'm pleased for Wilson because he missed a couple on the first day of the season against Villa. But it's good for him. But I don't think oh, the two fullbacks look so nervous, Joe. And this is when you've got a man up, when you're playing in front of your home crowd and they're not behind you because they're expecting a win. The two of them are just shriveling up in their shells at the moment. They've got a man up, the pair of them. A lot of football to be played in this game. You have to wonder why, why they would have those nerves in their mind. Whether it's a tactical change or something just not quite right. I don't think it's anything to do with the, t the tactics. They're just basic errors with the two fullbacks. I mean, Cresswell for the two goals, obviously, but Jenkinson as well looks just as nervy. But Cresswell, after such a good season last season, has you know, he's just got to keep performing and be totally concentrated because it, it'll come back and bite you. And it has today. Here's King looking for Wilson on a hat trick. Side netting. He is oozing confidence now. Yeah, if you're going to be a little bit critical after a lovely little give and go around the corner, he's got to go across the keeper here. Never going to beat him on the near post. I think he mishits it a little bit here, Callum Wilson. Near post is not a, an option, but again, that wasn't a problem for Randolph. Much to ponder for Stavon Bilic here. Defensively, his team on the ropes. Adam Wilson's never scored a senior hat-trick. With still an hour to play here. He might well fancy his chance in this one. Scored 45 goals in the past two campaigns for Coventry and for Bournemouth. Now he has a top-flight double to his name. Doesn't get any easier here for West Ham because Bournemouth will knock this ball about. And when you're up, you get the confidence as well to knock it about even more. West Ham somehow have got to get the crowd behind them. And if that means making a few tackles, have to do that as well. Here we go again. It's a mistake again. Wilson once more. And stabbed away by Randolph. West Ham so open, so many mistakes. That time Ogbonna, Sermon, it's a good ball. Francis, what a chance it was there for a third goal. That time it was Josh King. Well, West Ham are all over the place. Again, good football. We'll just get to that dead ball line again. This comes back and Josh King can't quite have the technique that Wilson had. It was nearly identical to the first goal. Just needed to divert it on target, but couldn't keep it down this time. Again, Ogbonna caught in possession. Everybody's slow on the ball. I think... I don't know what they put in them drinks, Joe. We mentioned the warmth as well here. If West Ham are going to spend all day chasing the ball, they'll be shattered. They've been second best well and through the here. We're just over half an hour gone. Both James Collins and James Tompkins have been warming up on this near side. There are two defenders now, part of the coaching staff at West Ham, with Julian Dix alongside Slaven Bilic. And James Tompkins, I think, will be coming on shortly. And stripping off down beneath us here. Meantime, it's King for Bournemouth. OK for Daniels. Gradle. Challenge was by Reed. Obiang up towards Sacco. First to it though was Cook. Oh, 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 oh. 
Saka. Here's Obiang. Now Nova for Noble. Dink over the top by Noble. Now feet back to Boric. Well, unless there's an injury, if the James Tompkins is coming on um, for a defender, it's pretty damning on his own defenders there, Slavon Bilic. So who could blame him? And we understand that it's Ogbonna, who's the defender who will make way. Here's Sermon. It's picked out Matt Ritchie. Francis ahead of him. Good movement there by Francis. The pass to him a bit too heavy though from Ritchie. So here is the change then. With 34 minutes gone, West Ham switching their back line. And some jeers around the ground as Ogbonna departs to a Manfred rival of James Tompkins. Well, I think it may be a little bit of an injury for Ogbonna, I'm not quite sure, but... If defenders had to be substituted, I, I think, apart from Winston, Winston Reid, you could have picked any one of them out. Well, Tompkins did start on the opening day in the win at Arsenal. He watched from the bench last weekend. But he's on now with ten minutes to go until half-time today. There's been no treatment given out to Angelo Ogbonna on the West Ham bench. So it appears to be just a like-for-like -like swap because Ogbonna was playing so poorly. Gradle, left by O'Kane, King just behind him. Gradle once again. Eden O'Kane. Come back for Sermon. Francis. And Sermon. Put the space here. The shot was by Daniels. It's all too easy. It's great football, though. Daniels, the left back, he pops up in a little pocket of space. Playing just off the striker. This is terrific football. Just wide of the post, and I think Randolph had it covered. But the way he just sat in a little pocket there, he made the movement. They're finding each other with their passes. It's good football. They're dominating West Ham at the moment. He's had three and a half years break. with Bournemouth. In that time, Charlie Daniels has scored eight goals. There's a problem being sustained here by Gradle, which will be of concern to Bournemouth because the Ivorian has had a very productive opening half an hour or so. Bournemouth physio has been called for. Well, they do keep the width really well. Grade all one side, Richie the other. You've got a right footer on the left, left footer on the right. They like to come in off the line, which by doing that, that enables the fullbacks to go and get on the overlap. And you can see Francis has got in twice. Daniels has got in many times. And at the moment, the way they're passing that ball, West Ham are chasing shadows. And with the two finishes as well, the two blunders in that back line from West Ham, it's a bit of a nightmare afternoon. Well, I don't know really on this second goal what Cresswell's thinking about. Again, good play, Gradle holding it up. They're waiting for their opportunity, and look at that. He's just here, cushions it back. I think he was trying to cushion it back for Ogbonna or the keeper, but really, you've just got to clear your lines, and he finishes it ever so well again, Callum Wilson. But that was a gift, that one. There's Northern, beaten to it by Tommy Elphick. Cresswell was fouled there by Ritchie. Obiang, £7 million signing from Sampdoria. Reed, and now Tompkins. Jenkinson. This is Czech Kuyate. Daniels up against him. It's going to be a corner. Well, this gives West Ham uh, a chance to, to commit some players forward to this corner kick. 
be interesting to have a look at Elphick and Reed. They've been in a few tangles. A couple of other set pieces coming in. I'm sure the referees, as you can see, he's got his eye close on them. Not looking at the ball at the moment, Elphick. Payet's corner came off the head of King. And Elphick beat Reed to it. I can't understand how defenders don't look at the ball, Joe, because how do you know where it's coming in and, and where the flight of the ball's going to be? OK, you're trying to block your runner, but... Here's Sacco. But in terms of pure defending, it, it's, it's a crime not to watch the ball. Sermon. They're playing their way out of danger there, Bournemouth, but it was given away by King. Reed for West Ham will try and get one back here before half time. Get themselves a foothold back in the game, but not with a pass forward like that. A worrying time down there for Slaven Bilic. His team haven't really showed any intent this afternoon. They haven't really looked well the shape of the side. They haven't really got their passing going, and it's Bournemouth who have imposed their game on West Ham rather than the, the other way around. Here's Payet. It's been pretty quiet for West Ham. Now Obiang. Cresswell on the move from left back. Just kept that ball in play. Francis under pressure. And he defended well. Here's Mark Noble, West Ham's longest serving player. Inside by Payet. Not to a Clariton blue shirt. And Ritchie on the counter now for Bournemouth. King. King is away from Tompkins. Ritchie. And his weaker right foot. And a poor header. It's Obian there with the tackle. Jenkinson at full that time. Oh, Jenkinson's just headed it straight down again. Height and distance. Got to be. Got to be clearing that area. Free header. Didn't even have to jump. Just plopped it straight at the feet of the Bournemouth attacker. Just need a few men around now just to get these fullbacks going. They've lost their confidence and really need a couple of men to help them out. Well, given the way they played here so far, West Ham uh, a tad lucky not to be more than two goals behind. Payet. Sacco on the move. Oh, it didn't quite come for Boric. Sacco couldn't quite take it in his stride. Bit of a nervy moment there for Arta Boric. Lovely ball from Payet. Look, he just drifts this over to defender Cook, and Sacco nearly gets on it, but in the end, just checks on the surface. Boric nearly goes past the ball. Nearly gets it here, Sacco, but that's a lovely ball. There, see the check on the surface? That done the keeper there. The pole spent last year on loan at Bournemouth, a deal which became permanent in the summer. On a free transfer from Southampton. Kept 16 clean sheets last year in the Championship. Happy for his first of this campaign here today. Back in the top flight where he played over 50 times in his time with the Saints. Francis waiting for movement, provided by Ritchie. There's a foul there by Matt Ritchie. A little word as well. For the one time Portsmouth player. Sacco the targets. And he won it, but no one there in behind him. Payets putting some pressure there on Tommy Elphick. I think Bournemouth will be just keen now to get into the break. They've totally dominated, dominated this first half, Joe, just getting there 2-0 up. I don't want to be conceding a goal after dominating the play. Here's Cech Cuyate. Just over two minutes of first half, normal time to go. Jenkinson, no route past Gradle. It's the Ivorian who is firmly on top in that battle on that side of the pitch. 
Bournemouth players on top pretty much everywhere in their individual battles in this first half today. It's been a first half to savour for those from Dorset. And again, you see Jenkinson going forward, just ran straight into trouble. Sermon. On it goes, and Francis. Funny, uh, Cresswell having a poor game today and been so good last season. Uh, Slavin's assistant down there on the bench is Julian Dix, who probably was one of the best left backs that West Ham ever had, and just wonder what his thoughts would be at um, half time. Oh, a good man to offer a few words of wisdom to Cresswell at half time. They might be quite forceful words, you might imagine, from Julian Dix. Yeah, you wouldn't want to cross the Terminator down there. <laughs> uh, terrific lad, Julian. And I, no, I'm sure he'd be really helpful towards Cresswell. Last thing you want is someone on your back. Well, the West Ham fans have been on the back of their team in this first half here. It's pretty flat from a West Ham perspective, but Bournemouth absolutely loving it. So far, so very good for Eddie Howe's side. His first two games in the top flight have proved how unforgiving the Premier League can be. Both narrow defeats. This time around, Bournemouth have a healthy advantage. Josh King. Ritchie on that favoured left foot. Maybe Yang is there. Now Kuyate. Well, you said it on his favoured left foot. I think. Um... West Ham have got to wise up to that, he comes in off the line, you've got to play him onto his right foot, his weaker foot. We're in four minutes of first half, stop it, shame. Payets. Set back for Obiang, good tackle though by Ritchie. Just as Obiang was about to pull that trigger. And now Francis, if he keeps his ball in play, can scurry forward for Bournemouth. Waiting for support now, Francis. King on the overback. King with a cross. Wilson's back post. Touched behind for a corner by Jenkinson. Well, that's a good run by King late in this first half. He's galloped 50, 60 yards to overlap and help Francis there. Unfortunately, they didn't have anyone on the end of it at the far post, but just showed a willingness to make those runs. Well, can Bournemouth add a third goal here before half-time? Francis. Here's Gradle. Plenty of players in and around the box to aim for. This is Steve Cook. Richie might let fly from here. Again, Slavon Bilic screaming at his defenders to come out. At all the time in the world, Richie here. Look at Richie, he just sits back in his pocket. He's coming off the line again with Francis around the outside. Look at the space to drive. Although the shot's over the top, there's far too much room. Another big chunk of first half stoppage time here, most of which due to the drinks break. And if the conditions are a factor here, it's certainly Bournemouth who are coping much, much better. He's a very charismatic man, Slavin Bivic. Here's Wilson in behind of Tompkins. Wilson square, it's Gradle! It's a fantastic save by Randolph. But perhaps that should have been Bournemouth's third goal before half-time. Well, again, terrible defending in and around the halfway line. Look, beats all the players. One ball over the top, Wilson squares it to Gradle. Everybody was worrying about the keeper, but he's kept him in the game. Great save from Gradle as he opened his body up. Maybe telegraphed it a little bit where it was going. Super stop, though. That should have been game, set and match. Will be a corner for Bournemouth. Driven in by Ritchie. Left by O'Kane, it came to King. That's Sacco for West Ham. Here's Cuyate. Sacco went on. The block was by Daniels. Sacco again. 
up against Cook this time. And it sliced behind for a goal kick. Well, there have been two chances for Bournemouth since they went two up. One for King, one for Gradle. And they might have been out of sight by now. Yeah, and I can't remember a chance for West Ham in this first half. Total dominance. And if anything, I think Eddie Howe may think maybe we should have been further away from West Ham and this game been over. Well, he's felt this type of performance and scoreline have been coming, given the way his team began their opening two games. It's all gone right for Bournemouth so far here. But it might have been more than just two goals, their lead. Final few seconds now of the first half at a time. It's a good jump by Tommy Elphick. Well, there's the half-time whistle. A fantastic first half here for Bournemouth, and in particular for Callum Wilson, with his first two goals in the big time, both after mistakes, coming from Aaron Cresswell. A torrid first half for West Ham United. And the half-time score here in the Barclays Premier League is West Ham nil, Bournemouth 2. Welcome back then to Upton Park. We have a half-time change here for West Ham United. Kevin Nolan is being taken off and replaced by Matt Jarvis off the bench for the second time in the Premier League so far this season. Two changes then made already by Slaven Bilic as his team try and overturn this two-goal deficit here at Upton Park today. So we're underway here once again. Bournemouth with a two-goal advantage at half-time. A sensational first half for the top-flight new boys. The double from Callum Wilson. Eddie Howe will recall, though, last year in the Championship, Bournemouth dropped a whopping 28 points from winning positions. They had two goals in the first half here. They may have had more, Tony Gale. It was a terrific Bournemouth showing in that first period. Yeah, they deserved it, Joe. But the second half, if the crowd get behind them and they're attacking their fans now, West Ham, they saw it against Leicester last week, they had a little bit of a go at them and the fans get behind and Bournemouth have got to weather that, the storm that comes along. But like West Ham have changed their formation now, they've more or less gone 4-2-3-1 as well from their diamond sh system. They've more or less matched Bournemouth up. So now, in other words, you'll know where the fault lies because they're all going sort of man for man matching the systems and seeing if they got the better team. Well, it's a West Ham free kick just after half-time. Can they pull one back here? Payet's balling was a good one. More up than away. Boric with a punch clear, then re-jumps. It might come the way of Mark Noble, and he went down, and it's a penalty. Mark Noble deemed to have been fouled, and West Ham have a route back into the game just after half-time. Well, exactly what Bournemouth didn't want. It was a great free kick in from Pyatt. Lovely whip on it. They were struggling. Boris couldn't get his hands far. His punch far away. Noble controls. He's waiting for the foul here. And he gets it. I'm afraid King's a silly boy. He just commits himself here. Doesn't need to. There's the clip. And he's down. Silly challenge. Exactly what Bournemouth didn't want at the start of this second half. Well, Mark Noble has scored 23 times from the spots for West Ham United. Noble against Boric. Noble scores, and it's game on! Just after half-time, West Ham back in it. West Ham 1, Bournemouth 2. Well, great penalty kick. Look, he never looked in doubt. Sent Boric the wrong way, but it was still right in the corner. Look, into the side netting, if you like. That's a great pen. Here's the incident again, look, King sticks his leg out, Noble's waiting for it, and really you cannot go fishing in this position here. Look, as soon as you do that, that's a silly, silly challenge. 
Yes, Noble was trying to buy it, he bought it. But poor challenge from King. And the mood has changed here now. West Ham fans have found their voice there behind their team again. Mr. Reliable, Mark Noble from the spot. Here's Josh King now for Bournemouth. Been to it by Winston Reid. Francis for Bournemouth. Noble's touch. Jarvis was there as well. Gathered by Darren Randolph. And here's the West Ham goal scorer, Noble. Saka. Nice turn by him. And he's driving on. In the end, he was stopped by Charlie Daniels. And this game has really come to life after half time. Well, this is what Bournemouth wouldn't have experienced. You know, big Premier League crowds really getting on top of their teams now that fans have been won around by this quick start. Now Bournemouth have got to see what they've got in there to try and weather this storm that's going to come. And try and get their foot back on the ball. There's an immediate response, a substitution being made. Yes, Bournemouth will turn to their bench pretty much straight away. Having shipped that goal, it's Mark Pugh there who is waiting in the wings. This will be a real examination now of Bournemouth's metal. Noble. Diafra Saka. A good tackle by Daniels. I understand Josh King is the Bournemouth player who will make way. Josh King is down at the moment, which is why players has been stopped. Looks as though a forward will be sacrificed here by Eddie Howe to bring on the extra man in midfield. Well, it's, a, it's what you wanted to do, really. I, well, if you're going to make a substitution, slow this game down. West Ham had their tails up. Really, there's the booing from the crowd, and I think West Ham need to get on with this game as quick as they can. Really get on with the game, keep the tempo high, get straight into this Bournemouth side who won't really have experienced these kind of afternoons when a team's coming back at you with a big crowd attacking their home crowd behind the goal. They're going to be up, and Bournemouth have got to defend now as well as get their foot on the ball. Going to be a great second half, Joe. For the one face there for Josh King as he departs to allow for the arrival of Mark Pugh. Of course, King had a great chance in the first half to score a third goal for Bournemouth. And then he was the man who gave away the penalty. And Pugh was going to return the ball there to Darren Randolph, but West Ham win it back anyway. Well, I know what he's going to do. He's going to kick it out for a goal kick, so that would have been out of order. So, uh, do you know what? Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I would do. Get on with the game. Pick the crowd up as well, didn't it, as well? They may say it was unsportsmanlike behaviour, but you've got to get something going, you've got to make it happen. Did have a slight hamstring tweak, we think. Josh King, you went off. But it was the perhaps inevitable change anyway, with the extra midfield player being brought off. Cook with the header. There's Reed for West Ham, now Obian in Cresswell. He had that first half to forget, he's found Sacco, now it's Payet! And Coyote, played by Daniels, there were one or two hopeful shots for handball from those around us in the stands here. I don't think so, but it was better, great for his ball in from Cresswell, he's uh, someone who's got to pick his game up second half, that's better. Whenever you're looking, looking decisive, pass those balls in there at pace. Carl Jenkinson with the West Ham throw. Sacco, turn well, Coyote! It is 2-2! Two goals in four minutes. West Ham have come back from 2-0 down to level the game. What a turnaround! Well, this is really poor defending. And this is what I said, they're going to have to weather it. Now, look at this crowd now. Ball in, Elphick's got to get someone in front of him. He can't allow that ball to come in there. Good save low down from the keeper, but by, 
Koyati's onto the rebound. Look, that's too easy. Throw into the area, save, and he's on the knockdown. 2-2, and all the good work's undone in a matter of moments. But Elphick should be governing that. Someone should be in front. It shouldn't have been thrown into the feet there so easily for Sacco. That's where they need it. Now, this is where he's got to earn his call, Eddie Howe. This is now a difficult game. Had it all their own way in the first half. Now they've got to pick it up again, Bournemouth. Eddie Howe's team have crashed back down to earth with a bump. Check Coyarte's second goal of the campaign. West Ham back on terms in next to no time after half time. And here they come again. Payet taken off his toes by Sermon. Matt Ritchie. Reed with the header. That's a win that with Wilson hoping to pounce in behind. And it's been some game here so far. And there is still so much to come. Yeah, if you're West Ham, you really want to keep on the front foot. Don't worry about the, the drinks breaks, really keep this going. No chances taken there by Steve Cook. Well, they love it when they're attacking that end. They're in front of their home fans, just banks upon banks of West Ham fans, and it really drives them on. There's that Bobby Moore stand, like a magnet. As West Ham have played from left to right now after half time. We were two goals behind at half time last week, West Ham. They couldn't complete the comeback that day. And now they are back on turns. Sacco going for a curve. Never bending in time. Uh, just coming along, just trying to curl this one for the far corner there, and Sacco started this second half really well, hasn't he? He's on his own a lot of that time in the first half, but since West Ham obviously switched their system a little bit, he's paid dividends. There's Francis going back to Boric. Here's O'Kane. Cresswell. And the half time words of Snap and Bridget have done the job for West Ham. They've come out, revitalised here. Well, two bits of poor defending for West Ham, equally for Bournemouth. I mean, giving away a penalty king when really he just didn't need to make the challenge. And the second one was just basics of having someone in front so you can't throw the ball into the area into the striker's feet and that's where Elphick has to govern it and pull his defenders around so that ball can't come in there well it's nearly three years since West Ham came from behind at half time to win a game in the Premier League 3-1 success over Chelsea in December of 2012. Here's Gradle, and he's let fly! And it had Randolph stretching to his right. Well, good strike, I mean, he switched into this role, he's taking King's role, just off the striker now, just in that three behind the main striker. He'll enjoy that position, Max Gradle. Just hasn't had a lot, a lot of time to grow into it since this uh, quick start to the second half. Four goals here, just short of an hour play. There were five score when these two sides last met in a league fixture in 1990 in the old second division. West Ham won 4-1 that day. Julian Dix amongst the goal scorers. It's Coyate's dink ball being flicked on by Sacco. Coyate's there again. Here's Sacco. The back heel was meant for Coyate. Noble. Here's Cresswell. And there's much more bite now about West Ham's play. Tompkins. The 
A good ball that by Tompkins. Saka went over in the box. Almost just about clear their lines. Great ball in, wasn't it, James Tompkins? Just got the, the whip and the pace on it just to get it behind that back four. But West Ham really on the front foot now, and Bournemouth have to dig in. Oh, poor ball, Winston Reid. Callum Wilson. And it's tackled by Nova. Pugh. Daniels for Pugh. Richie. Noble. Hopes on by Cook. <laughs> now, there was so much talk about West Ham's lack of firepower. But they uh, popped up with two goals here to peg back Bournemouth. Martin Abel from the spot, and Czech Kuyate, the two midfield men. And appeals for a free kick there for Bournemouth, but there was no whistle forthcoming. Callum Wilson, the player who went down. He's winning every ball at the moment, Sacco. Anything going up into the air towards him with the centre-backs, he's winning those flick-ons. Someone's got to join him, though. And West Ham will look more secure since Shane Tom Tompkins has gone in the centre of defence there. That claims for a foul, I don't think so. I think he's trying to make the most of that one, Wilson. But Tompkins, for me, is a better defender than Ogbono and all. No, they paid a lot of money for Ogbonna, and this kid come through the ranks. That's Tompkins' clearance there. One of the longest-serving players now on the books of West Ham United. Daniels with the throw into the chest of Wilson. He couldn't make it stick. Here's Francis, Ritchie, Wilson. This is what they've got to try and do, Joe, get their foot back on the ball, get passing again. Here's Sermon, and a surge in midfield from him. Gradle, it's Pew! Well saved by Randall. Still might be a chance, though, as it came the way of Ritchie. And he caught that with some power there, Mark Pew. It was a good stop from Randolph, it wasn't far away from his body, but sometimes those are more difficult, and he gets a real heavy hand on this one, that's the key. Good build-up again, Sermon just getting down this line, then Pugh becomes involved and eventually gets his shot away after combining with Gradle. That's a good stop, look how far he gets that away from the danger area. That's a really good stiff wrist of the ball. Easy to just knock those down for oncoming strikers, good stop. Well, there was some talk about Robert Green perhaps being signed in advance of this game for West Ham, but Randolph, the man with the gloves, done his job once or twice. Some concern here, meantime, for Czech Kuyate. Man who scored the equalising goal for West Ham. He's in a bit of pain here, being attended to by the West Ham medical staff. I think with these firm surfaces, it's more about the landing when you're, you're coming down with it a bump. Here's the goal again. Look, Elphick should simply get someone in front of him there. I think it's Cook, actually. Yeah, it's Cook who really should have got someone in there defending. Elphick's moaning behind him, but 
Cook should have just got someone in there. Once that the attacker receives the ball, he's back to goal, you really are stuck because he gets a half turn, he gets his shot away, you get your foot out, it goes through your legs, keepers have to save. And from that short range, it's very difficult for keepers. If you get someone in front, then you can't drop the ball into the striker's feet. That's where they should have been more organised. That left shoulder looks to be the area of concern here for Kuyate. West Ham just have the one substitution left. Remember, they made all three changes last week. Then Adrian was sent off, so Carl Jenkinson had to end the game in goal. No sign of a change here just yet from Slaven Bilic as Kuyate moves off the pitch for the time being. He's now being waved back on, Czech Coyote, so West Ham continuing with 11 men again. Noble. Here's Jarvis. Try and drive at Simon Francis. Good time there, Jarvis. Overlapping is Cresswell. That's far too close, though, to Boric. Oh, I just think Jarvis should take the initiative there he's the wide player he can whip it in just come on in his right foot I mean he's two-footed Matt Jarvis so he's difficult to defend against he doesn't have to go past you to get crosses in just get half a yard either side whip them in and Sacco loves attacking those balls in the area Sermon the best first touch there by Wilson West Ham hoping to record their first home points of the season. Did win the bulk of their points here last year. 31 points, one at home, compared to 16 on their travels. But either side of the summer break, it's been just two wins from West Ham's last eight league games here. And with this, their final campaign at the Bowling Ground. They'll be hoping to end it in style in front of their home supporters. Gradle helps on for Wilson. Nice take that by Callum Wilson. Gradle's there again. He caught Reed napping. It's a good pass too. It's Pew, and it's still Pew. Oh, wonderfully done! Mark Pew brought off the bench for Bournemouth, and the Cherries lead again. This is some game. It is some story. Great finish, wasn't it, from Pew? Well, West Ham's defence just got all under the flight of the ball here, and you can see as it comes out to this left-hand side, you knew Pugh was going to try and cut in on his favoured side. Does it really well, commits Jenkinson and goes for the far corner. Great strike, really good finish. And the keeper again has got no chance. Here's the dummy, buys it, Jenkinson, goes sliding in again, and it's a super finish as well. I think you must have to take your chances that he's going to hit that with his left foot. But again, maybe your homework's not done. Favours that right-hand side. Really good finish, though. Well, when West Ham came from two down, we said this would be a real test of Bournemouth's metal. Well, there's your answer. A quite super finish from Mark Pugh for his first ever goal in the big time. And Bournemouth are in front once more. And here he is again, Pugh. Belty was fouled there by Noble, but the referee with a different opinion. West Ham are back to square one. Yeah, they've got to pick it up again, Joe. I think it's a 2-2. A West Ham just lost a little bit of momentum. A couple of little injuries, drinks, breaks, whatever. you just got to get that momentum going all the time. Here's Payet. Kuyate for Sacco. Defended by O'Kane. Plenty of bodies back there, that was good defending. Sacco got his head up, there was just a line of Bournemouth shirts. Well, he must be delighted with the way his team have responded here to West Ham's two goals just after half-time. Bournemouth with their nose in front again. Silence the crowd again here. The home fans, at least, the away fans are in full voice. It's 
Becoming a tough watch once more for West Ham's Croatian boss, but not for those fans who made the trip from the south coast, 150 miles or so to East London today. They saw their team fail to score in their first two games of the campaign. They have three here at Upson Park. Obiak, it's a loose pass. Picked up by O'Kane, then Wilson was there. Darren Randolph here who led in all those goals against Bournemouth last year playing for Birmingham. We've seen three go past him today. <laughs> Funny enough, he couldn't have done anything about them really, Joe. There have been three really good finishes. He had a couple of good saves as well. And in that 8-0 Bournemouth win at Birmingham last year, Mark Hughes scored a hat-trick. And he's beaten Randolph again here. West Ham players, they're going for the same ball. Yeah, again, there's a lack of communication, you know, you've got to be... You're under the flight of that ball, you've got to tell everyone to get out of the way. That was James Tompkins' ball. Centre-backs want to be challenging, full-backs can drop round. And still just over 20 minutes to go here. This game could yet twist and turn in either direction. Daniels. Wilson was strong. He's done really well there, Callum Wilson. Yeah, that was excellent. Really good strike was play. Not only good control, but real good body strength. Richie. And Francis with a give and go there with Sermon. Francis with the ball in. Went all the way across the face of goal. No one made it a profit from a Bournemouth point of view. A great ball in from Francis. Really enjoyed it out, hasn't he, on that right hand side, getting in advance of Richie. Really got some room out there and created that first goal and other chances. Oh dear. There we go. I can understand the crowd's frustration at this, Joe, but really not well. I can't remember having a drink when I was playing. Not rehydration anyway. <laughs> it's just taking the tempo out of the game. It's just. The sting's gone out of the game as, you know, if I was Billich, I'd have said, no, 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 let's, let's carry on. Yes, really I, don't need this. Ideal for Bournemouth. And the fans around here not happy. And the fans not happy. Neither will the Supremos be here at West Ham. David Sutherland, one of the co-owners, watching on here. And a bit of a row with Charlie Austin in midweek. David Gold watching on here too. Two men who I'm sure will be very busy over the next week or so. With West Ham hoping to add further recruits before the end of this summer transfer window. There has been talk of Alex Song being brought in on a permanent base after his loan here last year from Barcelona. A deal which is not over the line yet. There is a medical which he is due to take. Some reports before the game unconfirmed that that medical didn't go too well, but we stress unconfirmed. And they yet still in movement in terms of that transfer deal in the days ahead. But you would think West Ham do require reinforcements. Oh, definitely. They're definitely up front, Joe. That's where they need them desperately because there's no other options should things not go so well. Kevin Nolan had to start up there earlier on and they've changed the system now. Obviously going with wider players. Koyati's come out to the right and Jarvis the left, but Koyati's not really suited to that position. So definitely need reinforcements. Not Daniels. So sure, not so sure about being about critical about other teams' players, though. Yeah, that was the essence of the disagreement, should we say, between David Sutherland and Charlie Austin. Here's Sacco. Tackle with by Pugh, and be a goal kick, much to West Ham's annoyance. Well, Pugh was convinced. Good tracking back from the wide player here, look. Maybe got a point as well as he gets slid in, it just ended up coming off of Sacco's foot. 
It's good that your, your wide players are normally playing high up the pitch, are back there defending. Now, here is, here is the option coming on. Mayega hasn't had the best of times here at West Ham. Of course, yes, he's another striker. And it's um, Sacco who's going off. Must be injured, surely, because... He really is the main man. Yeah, light for light switch from Stavon Vinic. As Sacco departs the scene. Replaced by Madibo Maiga. Off the bench for the third match in a row. He returned in the summer after being away on loan at Metz in France last year. Looking for a new start in this new regime. Well, I can only think with Sacco, it must be a kind of muscular injury that they don't want to worsen because of missing a few games on the trot being the only striker. It's an awkward knock being sustained by Pedro Obiang, who stayed down. Meantime, here's Payet. Jarvis with the ball in. It's come to grade. Or West Ham in effect playing with 10 men here with Pedro Obiang on the turf. Bournemouth carrying on there with Gradle. He's played the pass here for Pugh. And the referee has eventually stopped the play here. Interesting that because Mark Pugh was in on goal if things had carried on there. But with Obiang in some bother, the referee stopped it. Well, you can't have it one way and not the other. Bournemouth got that in the first half. West Ham done it out, so... I, I personally think you should just get on with the game until when the ball goes out of play. Sure, he's got a bad knock there, Obiang, but... Gradle turns out this challenge, kind of a half-hearted challenge. I think everyone's kind of stopped anyway, but... Hughes convinced he's in on goal, but I'm not so sure. I think there was a couple of half challenges in midfield there. Bit of a contentious moment there. But this will be a concern to West Ham, who just made their final change with Maiga coming on. And now Pedro Obiang. Looks to be in some pain there. Now making his full debut for the club. And he got one right in the side, didn't he? You could see and Besides from getting the, the elbow in the side, he also had the, the crash landing as well, which enhanced the injury. It means a lengthy stoppage in play, though, which won't be of use to West Ham United here. Obiang somewhat gingerly being held back to his feet. And he might just have to soldier on. The nature of the knock sustained by Obiang, he looks set to try and run it off. The time being, he's off the pitch though as Bournemouth attack themselves. Gradle, well, he was fouled then by Tompkins. It's a Bournemouth free kick in a promising position. Well, this is where Gradle's going to be good, just running at players, sitting in that little pocket, turning and getting at players. So that's where they need to get in the ball. This is a good signing, Gradle. He does give you the option, he could play right, left, or just behind the striker. Very quick feet. So, what can Bournemouth conjure here? Gradle stands over the free kick. There's a flag up for offside. Well, in the aftermath of that slight skirmish when Obiang went down, a yellow card was shown for Arthur Boric, who sprinted some 60-odd yards to add his to Penneth And he picked up the booking from referee John Moss. Well, if you come that far out of goal just to contest something like that, I think you deserve it. Yeah, so... Kuyate. For Jenkinson. He will try and see that one behind, but failed. It will be a corner. 
Well, similar to Cresswell, you get yourself in a tangle, you really just got to clear your lines because this ball never really looks like getting out of play. And a correct decision, the corner kick. Payets with the ball in, into a very good area, noble shots. And Bournemouth repel the danger. Gradle putting real pressure on here, and he's done superbly well. He beat Carl Jenkinson. It's Max Gradle. It's a penalty, and Jenkinson could be in big trouble here. It's a red card to end a torrid day for him. Awful defending once more. Gradle was in behind, and Bournemouth now have a chance to seal the points. Well, I can't believe the games these two fullbacks have had this afternoon. I really can't. There's the clearance up the pitch, and Jenkinson just idles onto this ball. You're thinking, get onto it, give it back to the keeper, make a decision. He idles onto it. Gradle nips in, nips around him, cuts across his path. Really clever here, but he really didn't need to do that. And I think there's been a total lack of confidence from Jenkinson and Cresswell. Two of West Ham's big successes last season. Just had poor games this afternoon. It is Callum Wilson. And he scores it! What a day for Callum Wilson! The first hat-trick of his career. Bournemouth lead by four goals to two. Six years ago, they were in the bottom tier. And now, surely, they have their first ever top flight win. Well, congratulations to that young man. He missed a couple of chances on opening day, and but he's come back, and he's come back really well. A couple of good goals, and now a penalty to boot. Right in the corner. And again, Randolph, with all four goals, he's had no chance. And they deserve this victory, Bournemouth. West Ham had a bright 15, 20 minutes after the break, but really, they've deserved it. Quite a day for Eddie Howe's side. And there are West Ham fans all around us here, flocking towards the exits. Ten minutes to go. And with the Hammers now, down to ten men and two goals adrift. Surely it is game over and done with. Well, difficult, isn't it, just to commit many players forward when you're down to ten men now, Joe, but they had their little opportunity, got to 2-2, two -two, and that's when you sense the game died. And that was totally in Bournemouth's favour, and they started knocking it about again and played their way into the game, and they thoroughly deserved this victory, should it come about. Well, the club who were on the brink of extinction, languishing in the bottom tier of English football back in 2009. They were in a financial oblivion, but they had risen so fast and so well. And this will be a data saver for all of those involved with Bournemouth Football Club. They have had some great days over the past year or so. Of course, when they sealed their promotion to the beat sign, that was one of them. But now they really are at home. And watching on the Bournemouth chairman, Jeff Mostyn. Maybe trying to find some new recruits. <laughs> <laughs> I had a little chat with him, actually, when he was on his way up to the uh, director's box. And uh, just tell him to cut, keep his head up a little bit, because they played well in the first two games, and he realised that as well. It's all come good for him today. Congratulations to him. And there's my eager, and it's in! The game twists again. Madibo Maiga. It's back to 4-3. The 10 men have hope once more. You never know. Well, again, ball thrown in again. So easy to receive the ball. Bournemouth poor defending. Good turn by Maiga. I think there's a big deflection here, though. Let's have a look. No, it's just a dribbler straight down the middle. Keeper Boric has just gone the wrong way completely. If he'd have stood up, he could have just picked it up. Look at that, down the middle of the goal, and the keeper's committed himself. Poor keeping as well. I thought there must have been a deflection, but the keeper just committed himself. So many twists and turns here. And all those West Ham fans who went for the exits moments ago might come flooding back. 
Here's Callum Wilson. What a game we've had here. Here's Obiang. Anywhere will do there for West Ham. Just over seven minutes of normal time to go. I'd imagine there's a fair bit of time to be added on as well, Joe. Here's Sermon. And a few injury concerns and, of course, the drinks break as well. There will be, I would think, perhaps four or five minutes. Just can't understand what the keeper, Boric, was thinking about. Maybe you, you can't guess which way the ball's going when a striker's scoring or shooting from outside the area, but totally committed himself, just, just lied down on the floor. Made it so easy for Maega. Maega's first West Ham goal for nearly two years. And it's restored hope in these parts. Payet's ball in here. Ten men won't give in. The one hand ball there, the referee had a good view and said no. Here's Payet. Flicks off the head of Sermon. Tompkins has to be careful here with Wilson up against him. That's a foul by Callum Wilson. Well, Bournemouth have just got to see this game out. I mean, the points were there. Just take them and go home. Yeah, West Ham down to 10 men. And here they go, just a defensive midfield player coming on here, maybe just to shore it up. Yeah, Bournemouth second change, Max Gradle, who's had a brilliant impact in this game. Here's the play going off here to allow for the arrival of Dan Gosling. Did score here in a win for Everton six years ago. Part of the Bournemouth team now hoping to hold on to what they have in a seven-goal epic at Upton Park today. Maiga. Back from Sermon to Boric. And try and waste every available second here now. Well, you have to earn your wins in the big time. Bournemouth for finding that out here today, all right? Twice in this game they've had a two goal buffer. The lead now stands at just one. And here's Maiga. It's offside. Simon Long on this near side with the flag up straight away. Just anxious to try and get in here, Maiega. He's just trying to get in a little bit too early. You've got to delay that run. Maybe a bit of a time-wasting tactic from Bournemouth here. Boric on a yellow card, just have to be a bit careful. Oh, dear. Or maybe he tripped over him when he was going for that shot. I can understand the point being made by Slaven Bilic to our fourth official, Peter Banks. All is in good order now in terms of the Boric laces. Oh, don't take your eyes off this game. Four minutes to go in normal time. Gosling's there with a header, helps on by Matt Ritchie. I'm guessing there's got to be at least six minutes to go on. A couple of injuries, drinks breaks. Plenty of time left. Bournemouth have got to see it out. Here's Francis. Now Ritchie. Maybe attack is their best means of defence. Wilson. He's up against Cresswell. Jarvis doubling up. And a play there for a Bournemouth throw. This is now where they want to be. Ritchie for Wilson. Ritchie, nice reverse pass, though Kane couldn't quite control it. Francis with the header. West Ham have got a gamble here, Joe. They've just got to leave some players up front with my eager. Doesn't really matter. Point will be invaluable. Back-to-back in -back home defeats here in terms of their league football. Won't do much to appease the mood in these parts. Here's Payet. Obiak. 
Clipped up towards Maiga. Cook away. Here's Payet. Kuyate. A waste there from Czech Kuyate. Welcome back to Premier League football, Slavon Bovic. Well, I bet he can't defend... Uh, <laughs> I can't believe some of the defending that's gone on this afternoon. Although Bournemouth have played really well, they've been gifted. Some of these goals really have. Sorry to go on about the fullbacks, but really I can't think of a, a worse di display from two fullbacks. You mentioned some of the players out due to injury for West Ham. Of course, now Jenkinson too will serve a ban. Arguably, Joe, the two best players last season. The two of them are excellent. It's been given away again. Matt Ritchie. That's the fifth Bournemouth goal here. Tompkins with a foot in. Jarvis. Cuyate. Here's Maiga. It's done well, Maiga. There's the cutback, blocked though by Cook. Well, he's done the hard bit. He drifted past Elphick easily, just angled the leg out, but really got to miss that front man. Noble. Well won back by Pugh. Here's O'Kane. Now Sermon. West Ham's next game is away to Liverpool next weekend. And we have a two-week international break where they will try and regroup and get some bodies back. There's no flag here, it's Callum Wilson in behind for Bournemouth. It's Coyate's tackle, it'll be a corner. Well, again, all appealing for offside, but clearly on, the linesman is right up with the play. Yes. Well, there'll be no rush. For Bournemouth here as we tick towards stoppage time. And the board is up now. Well, we'll have six minutes of stoppage time. Time for drama here, yes. And number six has given renewed hope to the Hammers fans and players. That's a giveaway by Pugh. Jarvis. That's been a game full of defensive mistakes. It's made it so easy on the eye. Here's Pew involved once again. Sermon. Richie. They're doing exactly the right thing, keeping possession of the ball. They did it so well, 11 against 11, it should be easy, 11 against 10 now. Just haven't got to lose their nerve in this little bit. A nice touch there by Pugh, Richie. Number two of the three new boys went straight down last season. QPR and Burnley. Bournemouth, the champions of the championship last year. Hoping to hang on for their first three points in Premier League football. They play in form Leicester at home next weekend. They also have a League Cup tie coming up on Tuesday with a long trip up to Hartlepool of League Two. There'll be a few tired legs after this game here in these sweltering conditions. Here's Cook. And that was almost given away there by Daniels. No time to take a chance now. Oh my, good, good closing down there, really. That's what there's a few West Ham players that are out on their legs here. And Payet doesn't quite look fit at the moment. You need a bit of legs, even when you've got the 11 against 10, you need some to have the legs. A few missing at the moment.
Well, we still have more than three minutes of added time to play. Can West Ham create one more final decisive chance? Payet. Noble into Cuyate. And he went for goal. He almost fell the way of Cresswell, who was well forward. Reed with the header. Here's Obiang. Bournemouth will bring on Adam Smith shortly for their final change. Well, that's just to run the clock down because when you make the substitutions at this late stage, you don't get it back in time added on. And there's a simple offside from Ayaga. How frustrating is that? So here is the change then. Matt Ritchie coming off. And Adam Smith, who came off the bench late on at Liverpool on Monday. And with a cameo again here, the former Spurs U team player. And Bournemouth are almost there. And they will enjoy that long trip back down to the south coast. If they can maintain the three points here. Forward it goes by Kuyase, offside again, this time by Iga. That's twice within a minute, there's no excuse. Clearances are coming up, you've got to keep yourself onside to contest those eyeballs that are going to come in, but... So, uh, looking likely now, first Premier League win for Bournemouth. Well done to them and everyone concerned around the football club. Particularly Callum Wilson on his hat trick today. I think they've deserved their victory. After a long, long way, Eddie has men finally amongst the big boys in the big time with the riches of Premier League football. That's a mistake there by Randolph. And the header came in from Gosling. Randolph was back in time. Well, I make it one minute of stoppage time still to go. Now or never for West Ham. Few with the header. Here's Cuyate. Cresswell has to go forward now. Hanging towards Maiga. Came off Cook. Few was there. Then Daniels. Dimitri Payet. Awkward that for Cresswell in the sunshine. And closed down now by Smith. And here they are, the dying seconds, and it's a foul given away there by Smith. Well, that's a silly foul from Smith. He really has given West Ham a last chance. Cresswell's going nowhere, he's got his back to goal, and he's given away a stupid foul. Just come on the pitch as well. And Payet really does. To put the kiss of death on him, but really does deliver a good free kick. One more free kick to defend for Bournemouth. We are in the 97th minute. Payet's ball in. A whole posse of players went for it. And it's behind for a corner off O'Kane. What a dramatic finale here. The last chance to lose for West Ham. Payet's ball in, oh, a real scramble, and it just about stayed out. There's the full-time whistle. While Bournemouth had to wait six years for their rise all the way to top-flight football, and now they have their first win, and what a win it was. They just about hung on to win here by four goals to three in a classic contest at Upton Park. Callum Wilson with a hat-trick. We'll get the headlines tomorrow, but it was some old game here. It was his two goals in the first half, which gave Bournemouth a two-goal buffer. Back came West Ham with goals from Mark Noble and Czech Kuyate. But the game twists it back Bournemouth's way when Jenkinson was sent off. And the challenge brought about a penalty converted by Wilson. That was 4-2 after Pugh made it 3-2. There was one back for West Ham from Madibo Maiga, but Bournemouth hung on. What a win, what a day for them. West Ham 3, Bournemouth 4.